If you just close your eyes one time and you think of it, if you are able to bring this Pakistani electric car, the whole world will know about it. You know that? Just like Tesla, I mean, just like anybody else, you know, the whole world will know about it because it's not an easy thing. It's a very, it's a, it's a complex uh, piece of engineering. For us, like at least for me and our uh, most of the core team, I would say Pakistan flows in our blood. I mean, we I mean we think of Pakistan all the time. Indigenization means that you you own that intellectual property. We will own the intellectual. When we make our own electric car. We will own its intellectual property. It doesn't mean that it will have all the components to begin with from Pakistan. It can have some imported components, but, but we should be the principal. As a nation, we don't have much time. I mean, we have wasted so much time already. So we cannot just say, oh, we'll work on electric car, okay, it will come maybe in five, six, ten years or whatever. No, why can't now? Why can't we work on it now? So we, this now is the answer for everything in Pakistan. We have to do it now. I want to see change in Pakistan in my lifetime. You know, before, before I pass, I want to see Pakistan as a technologically developed country. We wanted to harvest uh, the brain power of Pakistanis, not their pockets. Not, not that, I mean, we don't want firms. I mean, obviously, we do some fundraisings. Our focus was most on, on, on getting people who have time, passion, and energy to invest in Pakistan, their brain power. So what we were trying to do is we were trying to reverse that, uh, the brain drain which happened, convert that into brain gain. To give you an example, like if you look at uh, uh, Michigan, Michigan had literally hundreds of Pakistanis, hundreds of Pakistanis working for GM, Chrysler, and Ford Motor Company, many retired, many working, who have been working on different subsystems of cars for years and years and years. They can, they can design their subsystems. If there's a seat expert, he can design a seat expert while he's sleeping, okay? If there's an expert who's doing the closures, like doors, he understands the doors inside and out. Designing a door of a car is not an easy thing. It's not just manufacturing that you're bringing the blueprints from outside. So we have experts there, we have experts in powertrain, we have experts in chassis. We said, why don't we just put them together and build a car for Pakistan? What does it take to design suspension? What does it take to design steering system? What does it take to design seats? What does it take to design chassis? What does it take to design uh, uh, electric motors? What, and, and so on. Uh, so there's a lot of industry will come out of it. I mean, that's why I'm saying this, is, this, this will change. Uh, I, I personally think this will uh, uh, change the fate of Pakistan, one product. It's not just electric cars, I mean, you look at anything. If you, you look at uh, in, in medical devices and x-ray machines and MRI machines and all of those things, how are you going to do it in Pakistan, indigenize it? I mean, unless you have that, that uh, know-how of the technology. So, so we said that we are going to mobilize those people or expatriates in every area, textile, agriculture, every, everybody, and then help that Pakistan in that area. The alignment is not there. Different ministries need to align themselves in the interest of Pakistan, not in their own interest, in the interest of Pakistan. And that's where I always say that you begin with the ends, not with the means. These ministries and the department, these are means, they are not ends. Ends is the product or prosperity which you want to bring, okay? And then, so if you begin with the, let's say, we are talking about electric car, that is your end goal which you want to achieve. Now, all the different many, many ministries, many, many government departments will play their role to bring electric car. They all need to be aligned. If they are not aligned, if they are only thinking of their own own chimney or on their own own thing, then they will not be able to, we will not, Pakistan will not be able to bring its own electric car. In order for Pakistan to bring its own electric car, there, there has to be an alignment of all these stakeholders. So you need to be very, very patient. 
the other thing which I learned here that you have to put your ego aside. If you you have, I mean, you have to kill your ego if you are working in Pakistan. Uh, honestly, go positive or negative, whatever it is, because uh, you, because if you get uh, strangled in those things, I mean, uh, you will not be able to move it. You have to have a uh, vision, like I mean, you have to have your uh, sight on the horizon, what what you really want to achieve, and don't get tangled by by these day-to-day things, and otherwise you'll get frustrated, and that's what happens with a lot of Pakistani, unfortunately, expatriates. They come here, they they have passion, they have money. They want to do something for Pakistan, they come here and then within six months, eight months, they get frustrated uh, with the system and they go sometimes for good reason, bad reason, then they, they go back. Because of this uh, uh, com- open communication, this YouTube and Google, everybody has access to it, so our kids are becoming very smart, very, very smart, I can tell you. I mean, these are not the kids uh, like uh, uh, maybe 30 years ago, 25 years ago or so. These are smart kids. They have, they have knowledge. Uh, they have data in their hands. And many of them, they know how to use it too. So that, that's, uh, I, I mean, I think um, our kids are very smart. So that is the strength which is going for us right now in Pakistan.